we see all these Orientalists in the uh, uh, and just not uh, Afunzade and Kermani, uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, you brought up a very important why Arabs. Uh, 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 so not just Afunzade and Kermani in nineteen, uh, you know, in eighteen something in the uh, in the late nineteenth century, nineteenth century, uh, in the early twentieth century. Uh, even those who, you know, in nine people's uh, intellectuals such as Hassan Taqizade and the Berlin 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 Circle uh, that was formed in in 1916 in Berlin, most of those intellectuals. It's interesting that they again they start putting all the blame on Arabs, or they never they never questioned they never talked about the British, French, you know, Dutch and all those, you know, Europeans that they have been in the in the Middle East and they kind of intervened in the domestic affairs, you know, of the of the country, of the kingdom, whatever you name it. I mean people like Hassan Taqizada. Hassan Taqizada is writing in 1915, 1916 who basically, you know, established the Berlin Circle. In the entire, uh, 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 his writing, basically, he, he never talks about uh, uh, the, the external, you know, European uh, interventions, European interference, inter, inter, interference in, in Iran. It's interesting. And then he also doesn't talk about the uh, jungle movement. He doesn't talk about the, uh, most of the the, the anti-colonial, if you name it, I mean by today's you know terminology, uh, you know the internal uh, the the anti-colonial movements uh, in Iran because they are you know led by the according to him by the ethnic groups and if you're going going to to promote or to highlight those anti-colonial movements, it 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 just doesn't sit well with his narration of the. Iranianness of or Iranian identity. A great question. Actually, we have we see a sort of gap between uh, you know the early ultra nationalist scholars such as or writers such as Afun Zadan Kemani. And then the later generation, Berlin Circle, as you as you mentioned, uh, uh, we know that because Akhunzade and 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 Hassan Taqizade, they were both, both Azeri Turks, so from the same region. And uh, I, I can assume that you know we can tell uh, by all means that they knew each other. I don't know if Hassan Taqizade was directly influenced by him. But as I said, his ideas, uh, uh, ideas were already out. They were there. They were, you know, circulated. And then uh, uh, did uh, Kermani, uh, you know, his his idea, his box. He wrote in Persians. So you know, because most of his books were, were in Persian, and specifically these two books, uh, they were already there. And so there is a lot. Uh, going on at that time, so we can assume that the Berlin Circle were very well aware of that, of the these ultra nationalist writings. I, I forgot to tell you that, uh, but I will come back to your question. Forgot to tell you that Kerman is the first one who recovers the term Aryan from the from the European text, and even he put the term Aryan or Aryan into a bracket to quote it to. To show that he adopted it, he quoted it from from someone from some text. So before that, the term Aryan did not exist in the in the uh, uh, eighteen in the nineteenth century's text. He was the the founder, not the founder. Basically, he's uh, the the one who 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 brought that term into into Iranian nationalist text. So with this in mind, we know that. The ideas were already there. The constitutional revolution was derailed. If you look at the constitutional revolution and you look at the constitutional, the constitution of constitutional revolution, you look at the draft, 
you see that it wasn't uh, 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 it, it didn't succeed in many ways because the first article of the Iran's constitution during the constitutional revolution is that the, the king is the Zalullah or the shadow of God, which means that, okay, well, we have the king on the top of everything. So, you know, we are supposed to, to be able to, I mean, to uh, hold him accountable, I mean, many ways. So it didn't succeed. So many, many people, but it's interesting that in the constitutional revolution, in the constitution, in the draft, it's interesting that there is no indication to Persian language as an official language. So in many ways, the, the draft was way uh, 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 modern, uh, 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 far modern, far, let's say, inclusive than the Islamic Republic constitution. I mean, in which the Persian language is officialized, you know. But so from there, many scholars, many people, many participants, many of the people or elites who participated in the constant revolution, they were frustrated. And they, you know, they didn't believe that the constitutionalism will ever succeed because, you know, we have uh, uh, the uh, Qajars and then uh, that they simply trampled the constitution. And then uh, in in nineteen in the early 20th 20, 20 century in nineteen in the first decade of the twentieth century, uh, we have this frustration in, in in the center and among the Iranian elites. Remember, we don't talk about the Iran as a culture. We talk about the elites or intelligentsia that they are educated, they are literate, uh, and they are going back and forth to to Europe and you know. They're educated people, intellectuals. We don't talk about people, you know, in, in different parts of Iran because everything happens in, in Tehran. It happens in, in the center, let's say. So Berlin Circle, in, in 1915, Hassan Taqizadeh, you know, he was frustrated with uh, constitutional, revol constitutional revolution, constitutional movement. It wasn't a revolution, really. It was a movement. He was in New York. And in 1915, uh, he was... Uh, you know, summoned or invited, let's say invited by the Germans uh, 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 Social Democratic Party to come to Berlin and to help Germany in his, its uh, propaganda war against the uh, Russian and British imperialism. So he takes that opportunity, he goes to Berlin uh, and then uh, uh, so he gathered uh, a number of the prominent Iranian elites, Persian elites. Uh, obviously not all of them were Persian because there were a couple of them were Azeri Turkic and one of them were, was Kurdish, Rashid Yasemi. So, so he gathered a number of people among those, the, the people that he gathered, uh, including himself, Hassan Taqizada, there was uh, Hussein, Hussein Kazem Zada. Hussein Kazem Zada is an important figure because he was so infatuated, so fell in love with the Iran's ancient culture, with the term Iran Shah, that even he changed his last name from Hosseini Kazem Zadeh to Hosseini Kazem Zadeh Iran Shah, just to emphasize that I am extremely, you know, Iranian. So when, when it comes to, you know, Hosseini Kazem Zadeh, some of you call him Hosseini Kazem Zadeh, he's Hosseini Kazem Zadeh dash uh, Iran Shah, or Hosseini Kazem Zadeh Iran Shah, okay? So Hosseini Kazemza was an important figure. And then we have Moshfaq Kazemi. We have uh, uh, Mahmoud Afshar. Uh, 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 and then, uh, uh, you know, I can't, I can't remember all the names, but these names are very important. Uh, these elites are very important because they continue to publish different magazines, different journals. And then in 1925, after the Reza Shah, uh, officially coming to power, becoming the, the, the king of Iran. They come back to Iran and they take political and financial and, and, and uh, administrative positions. Hassan Taqizad himself, he became the minister of, uh, of finance, you know, who basically, you know, as I said, uh, founded the, Be the, the, the Berlin Circle. So Berlin Circle is uh, referred to a group of Iranian intellectuals uh, that started, you know, writing about the Iranian nationalism. They paved uh, or they laid the, the intellectual foundation for Iranian nationalism in a more systematic, 
more uh, 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 elaborate way. So from in 1916, you know, uh, the Berlin Circle uh, is formed, uh, but they they start publishing Hassan Taqizadeh with the help of this this Ellis. He started publishing uh, a magazine uh, called Kawe. I'm sure that you everybody knows what who Kawe is. This legendary, you know, uh, you know, uh, ancient, you know, champion who stood against the heart. Uh, uh, so Kawe was uh, published from uh, uh, in two cities from 1960s 16 to 1919. So the first uh, period of Kawe was devoted to helping Germany to to be able to fight at least uh, in, uh, in in propaganda uh, prop to to win this propaganda war against the British and and Russia. But we do see, you know, definitely we see some, uh, you know, elements of the Iranian nationalism in the pages of Kawe. For example, the first, very first page of Kawe um, is about the Nowruz Jamshidi or the Jamshidian. Uh, Jamshidi is a, you know, mythical dynasty. Nobody knows when, but, you know, so Jamshidi Nowruzi, that's the, the first page of Kawe. Uh, so here or there, in the first phase of 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 Kabe, Taqizadeh and the writers they talk about the Iranian nationalism and the Iranians' glorious uh, ancient past. So you might be uh, uh, asking, okay, well, so how Germany basically, or how German idealism, German ideology affected uh, Berlin Circle? So it goes back to the uh, 18th century when the idea of the Arianism or Arian race theory is adopted by Schlegel, one of the German linguists and philologists. Uh, and and in, in, in 18th, 19th century, Schlegel talks about uh, the Arian race theory and he put the Germans and Iranian under the category of the Arian race theory or Arians. So, the affiliation or the association of Iranian as one of the as 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 one of the members of the Aryan race family was actually you know started by German ideologists in in 18th and 19th century. So there was a lot going on in in during the First World War. Uh, uh, German ideology, German idealism that well. The German are from the Aryan race, and then they are cousins with the Iranians, with some Indians, and then uh, there was a lot of, you know, intellectual and political debates about that. Uh, 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 it's not accidental that the Nazism came uh, uh, to being in Germany because this Aryan race theory paved a way for the rise of Nazism. Okay, so go back to go back to your to your question. The first uh, period of Kabe, publication of Kabe from 1916 to 1919 uh, was uh, more or less about supporting Germany against the British and, and Russian, Russian uh, uh, imperialism, to speak that is at this word. But okay, well, now the war is ended and then Kabe goes on uh, publishing basically from 1919 to 1922, Kawe is extremely focused on the Iranian nationalism, a focus on the Iran's ancient uh, culture, specifically on Ferdowsi, Shahname, talking about the, uh, you know, the Ruhe Irani, the spirit of Iranians uh, or Iranian spirit, and then the ancient past and the, 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 the poem and poets uh, and the, the, the heritage of the of the of the ancient Iran, and then uh, you know the Iranian figures, let's say. So in 1922, Hassan Taqizadeh basically, uh, you know, the Kabe is ended because of supposedly because of the financial support, because the Germany isn't able to uh, to support Kawa. But Hosseini Kazemzada, he publishes uh, another journal, which is called Iran Shah. So he picked Iran Shahr not only for his last name, but also as a name of his, his journal. And again, the 
the circle of intellectual they they start publishing in Iran Shai. And the Iran Shai is important, uh, 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 Sydney, because uh, uh, Hassan Taqizadi believed in the absolute surrender to the European culture, to Western culture, that we have to be a Western from 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 our head to toe, that Iran should be uh, all Iranians should be. Uh, you know, morally, physically, bodily, uh, 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 and and mentally, Europeans. We have to accept Europeans without any doubt, without any reservation. So, Hosseini Kazimzadeh, when he publishes Iran Shahs, he brings two points. The first one is that the idea of return to, to, to our Iranian culture, the idea of return to one's uh, culture that it's actually started by uh, by uh, by Iran Shahr, not by Jalal Ali Ahmed, the idea of Bazgashti Bikhishtan. So the second element is that he tried to uh, to make a bridge between the Iranian identity or Persian identity and Shiism. Well, the idea of Shiism was already there in the nationalist sense by people such as Ahmed Aqayov or Ahmed, Ahmed, uh, or, uh, uh, sorry, by Ahmed, 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 or Ahmed Oglu. And then, uh, but it was Iran Shah that they, 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 they tried to, to, to make this bridge. And the Iran Shah, basically, Kazim Zadi, he, he wrote an article in the Iran Shah that basically the, uh, the daughter of the Yazgird he, you know, he was married to the Imam Hussein, and then uh, it's how the Iranian culture and the Semitic culture and the Shia culture they got uh, to meet and they linked and they got connected. So Iran Shar even talks about, uh, and by Iran Shar I mean both. Kazim Zadeh and the, the, the magazine of Iran that was published from 1922 to 1925. Uh, he talks about the Ruhi Irani, he talks about the Khuni Irani or, or the Iranian blood. And uh, there are a few articles that might be interesting to mention in which he talks about the role of women in the preservation of the pure Iranian blood, pure Iranian blood. Uh, he was offering, supposedly he, he was offering some sort of marriage consultation to the Iranian women and people or Iranian youth people, uh, you know, they were writing to him and they were asking him, they were basically uh, uh, consulting with him if it is okay that we marry with a Farangi or a European guy or a European woman and he says it's up to you, but uh, I suggest, you know, we have to be careful about, you know, uh, our purity of blood and that the women uh, are at the front line of the preservation of Iranian identity, Iranian blood. He wrote uh, a, a very short book on the uh, Iranian ruh or ruh irani or spirit, Iranian spirit or Iranian soul. Uh, 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 the manifestation of Iranian soul or Iranian ruh, in which he talks about the ruh, and by ruh he means race and blood. It's interesting that he also writes an article about the Ottoman ethnic cleansing, the late Ottoman ethnic cleansing, because you know he was writing in the 1923, 1922. He was he was actually uh, 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 admiring the committee of uh, union and progress in turkey the young turks the c c u p group they started ethnic cleansing of the anatolian cultures armenians uh, and then greeks and assyrians and and he appreciate uh, c u p and he says that i wish we could have we could have done the same thing in iran it's interesting so, so uh, Iran Shah is uh, a more systematic, is a more nationalist in a way that it tries to 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 reconcile, in, you know, 
Shiism and Iranianism. And again, you might say, okay, well, what is the relevance? And the relevance is that in the same book, uh, in, in Shariati's book, Bashanasi, Hoveti, uh, Iran, Islami, he talks about the Shiism because he says that the Shiism is very much similar to Qasim Zadi, as if he copies from Qasim Zadi, I mean, intellectually, uh, not personally. He says that uh, the Shiism or Shia as a religion is very compatible uh, with the Iranian spirit because it has many similarities with uh, uh, the, the Zoroastrianism. Just the Zoroastrianism was very compatible with the Ruh Irani, with the Iranian Ruh in the ancient times, so is the, the Shiism. And then he talks about Tashayyur as a Mi'adgah. Mi'adgah means meeting place, dating place. Or uh, I don't know what could be what would be in English the better term for he says that Tashayu is a miadga, is a meeting place, is a dating place between the uh, spirit uh, between the se sem Semitic spirit Ruhi Sami and Aryan spirit Ruhi Arya. So if there is anything that we can connect these two, it is Tashayu because it very so you see that uh, a majority of of Iranian intellectuals in 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, until the 1979, I mean, the Islamic Revolution, we know the Sharia is called the uh, real founder of Islamic Revolution. I mean, he was the father, the father of Iran. So he was extremely uh, uh, informed and, and influenced by the, uh, uh, by the, uh, uh, you know, the first and second generation of the Iranian nationalists. So in 1925, when the Iran Shah comes to end, uh, uh, yeah, it's important. Uh, uh, Hussein Kazim Zadeh, he, 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 he gets depressed, he gets isolated, he basically abandons everything. He becomes a sort of like Arif or mystic. Uh, and he talks about the Iranian cosmopolitanism and that, you know, he becomes a sort of like, spiritual figure, very much similar to, to Taqiyya Arani, uh, a member of the 53 members of the communist uh, leftist party, let's say. I, I, I forgot to tell you that Taqiyya Arani was also one of the members of Berlin Circle who uh, produced, uh, published the uh, Majalaya Dunya, uh, a leftist, uh, uh, you know, magazine. Uh, he also, you know, he talks about the Persian language. He wrote two articles about the Persian language and he talks about the Azerbaijan and he says that the Azerbaijan, they were, you know, Azeri is a, is a branch of Aryan, Aryan language and they became Turk and Turk or Turkishness is actually in his, in his, in his work. It is just a disparaging. People never, people in Azerbaijan, they never, took any pride in, in being called a Turkish. So you see the same thing, the same argument, the same assertion being reiterated by Ahmed Kasravi. So you see the continuity of all these ideas, how they elaborate, how they become more and more uh, Persianist and, and in many ways, you know, highly racist, racist in a sort of ethnocultural sense, okay? So in 1925, again, to come back to your question, the Iran Shah is ended. And the third uh, magazine by the Berlin Circle, again in Berlin, gets published, which is called Namahaye uh, Farangistan. Farangistan, not Farangistan, Farangistan. The letters uh, uh, from, from Europe, from Farang from the West, let's say, Farag, by Mushfaq Kazemi. Mushfaq Kazemi is also another member of the Berlin Circle in which he comes back, you know, he comes back to the uh, ideas of Hassan Taqizadeh and he believes that, okay, well, it seems that, we, you know, he, he admires the European culture, admires Western culture, and he tries to get rid of the, you know, religious elements in, in Iranian Iranianness or Iranian identity, uh, and then he basically says that we need a, a iron iron fist. We need someone like Mussolini, who knows how to rule a nation, who knows how to bypass the law, but to play democratic, but to play you know a good uh, a leader. 
Uh, and then finally, uh, the last uh, magazine by Berlin Sirke, which is produced in Tehran, the last one, is Ayanda by Mahmoud Afshar. Mahmoud Afshar is an interesting figure. Perhaps among the Berlin Circle elites, he is the most the most racist figure in the uh, even more than in many ways more than Ahunza uh, 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 and Kermani because he he writes uh, he uh, publishes a, 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 a magazine called I and the or Future in 1925 in which he provides a platform a sort of political agenda how to actually create Iranianness or Iranian identity. Remember that before Mahmoud Afshar, there are all talks and debates intellectually and politically, you know, what is Iranianness and how can we be, you know, Iranian and all, all those sorts of stuff. But now the question is that how can we apply Iranianness? How can we foster Iranianness? Hey, well, f first he says that, uh, you know, he... Uh, in one of his articles, he mentions uh, eight or nine points, political uh, 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 agenda points that, well, we have to create uh, 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 railways so that in the long term, because of the moving of the population, because of transportation, nobody knows who is who. And then they simply, you know, uh, people get to get to know each other, and then uh, over time, the uh, you know the, the 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 tribal and ethnic identities they get melted and they get assimilated. So, the second one is that we have to move some Persian tribes to the borders, and we have to and then replace the Persian you know lands with the uh, uh, Azeris and uh, you know Turkey Azeris. Arabs and, and Kurdish tribes, and then this way we can. So he 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 suggests, uh, you know, uh, 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 displacements and and dislocation some of the you know in the tribes. He suggests changing the names of the provinces and villages, and the cultural heritages and occasions. He suggests uh, a free education, elementary specific elementary educations. Uh, education, Persian education, providing free books, free textbooks, free journals uh, uh, in the non-Persian regions. He uh, uh, basically advised all statesmen uh, of Pahlavi to, uh, to use any means available to be able to get rid of any sort of difference in clothing, in culture, in memories, in histories, and he says that the 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 the, the, the only and the only uh, uh, pivot of this of the Iranian nationalism of the Iranian identity is 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 language. It's interesting that most of these early uh, Iranian nationalist figures, uh, Sydney, they are Azeri uh, Turks. For example, Hassan Taqizada, Ahunzada, and then. Uh, uh, Hussein Kazim Zadeh Iran Shah, he was from Tabriz. And then Mahmoud Afshari, Mahmoud Afshari Yazdi, he's called Mahmoud Afshari Yazdi, but actually he was from Afshar's uh, tribe. He was uh, Azari uh, Turk. So these ideas, again, they are repeated after the Islamic Revolution. Well, for you, you know, to give you an example, for example, uh, 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 Sayyid Jawad Taba Tabai. He's also as a Turkic speaker, uh, speaking uh, historian. He died last year uh, or this year, uh, as far as I know. Uh, so he talks about the Iranian uh, uh, nationhood. He says that the Iranian nation had existed around 5,000 years ago before the European nations to appear. So this term, five, 4,000 years, 5,000 years, is also repeated in the uh, in the uh, most recent scholarship on, on, on Iranian nationalism.